Are you looking for a luxury compact SUV with performance, style, and practicality? Well, you don't have to go German or British. Just go like this and this. Introducing the first generation Maserati Grecale. This is the second SUV in the Italian automaker's lineup, and even though it's smaller than its older sibling, the Levante, this compact SUV is big on Italian styling. This definitely stands out. The color looks great, and you get all of the great Maserati styling cues like functional fender vents, some nice large wheels with red brake calipers, and you also get functional air curtains on the bumper and this nice large grille with the Trident logo right in the middle, and you also get the Maserati logo with the Trident symbol on the top. They want you to know it's Maserati. Adding to that classic Maserati styling is a sculpted hood for a more aggressive look, headlight housing that fits right into the Maserati design language, elegant tail lights, and body lines that give it a sense of speed. While looking the proper part of a performance SUV, it still has to do SUV things, like be practical. The roof doesn't taper off as aggressively as some other performance SUVs, and what that means is some good cargo space. And on the inside, there's no underfloor storage, sorry, but you get some pretty decent room. And the best part is folding down the second row seats are easy peasy because you just have these latches right here. Keep in mind, small caveat, if you're tall, the front seat, you may have to scoot up so the second row seats can fold. Not all the way flat, but you know what I mean. The Grecale gets up to 20 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats, which is more than a Porsche Macan, but less than a boxier BMW X3. Despite being considered a compact SUV, the Grecale boasts best-in-class interior space for occupants. Well, I'm here to put that to the test. As a 6'4 adult, I fit in the Grecale just fine. Seats are nice and comfortable. You got some good adjustability down here. And also on the steering wheel column, it's electronically adjusted as well. Steering wheel feels nice and hefty. I like that and it's a flat bottom. And overall, this is a premium quality interior. You have some nice stitched leather up top. And even on the door, you have your open pour wood, metal speaker covers, and the outboard and inboard armrests feel great. Overall, this is a nice premium interior. Maserati positions the Grecale as an everyday driving car. There's plenty of functionality up front with quality materials and some soft touch points for maximum comfort on daily commutes. But will rear seat passengers be as fortunate? Getting in the second row isn't that bad. I'm 6'4 again and I'm seated behind my front seat ideal seating position and got about a half inch of leg room but i like how my feet can slide under the front seats which is nice you do sit a bit upright and the side bolstering does kind of impede right here a little bit but that's probably my fault too many burritos but you do get some rear seat vents and a usb c and usb a plug and lens keys and you get a nice soft armrest right here in the middle portion again i'm super tall so my head does graze the headliner but i mean it is what it is and you have this transmission tunnel so slide over to the seat where the driver or the front passenger isn't freakishly tall and it's a good situation but again the bolstering can be a bit intrusive no more chips Along with interior comfort, the Grecale provides a high-end experience from its fancy leather-wrapped key to its available tech. There's a standard 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster and 12.3-inch infotainment screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone integration, and a minimalistic format that adds to its premium look. The cabin layout is a bit of a mixed bag. I like how the engine startup button is right here on the steering wheel. That adds to the experience. It's a nice performance oriented feature and you get a nice large digital gauge cluster with some customizable features in there. And you also get a digital Maserati clock right here, which you can change the screens. You can have a regular clock, a compass, or a G meter, but we'll keep it classy and keep it on the clock. A couple things that I don't like 
is the gear selector, which is this linear line of buttons right here. I wish it was something a little bit more substantial. And I wish all of the HVAC controls and your volume control isn't embedded on the screen because this can be a bit cumbersome to operate, especially when you're driving. Besides that, you have some nice open pour wood right here. You open it up, you get a little bit of storage and your USB-C and USB-A plugs. Get the open pour wood. You don't want the gloss black because this is a pretty high touch point area. You get some large cup holders, some decent storage in here, and wireless charging right here. And overall, the premium quality and the nice fit and finish, I think that definitely justifies the price tag. The Grecale will have three models available. The base GT model is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine delivering 296 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. The Modena variant, which is our tester here, has a more powerful 2-liter engine with 325 horsepower. And there's the top-of-the-line Trofeo model pushing out 523 horsepower and 457 pound-feet of torque from a twin-turbo 3-liter V6. Maserati also plans on introducing an all-electric Folgore variant sometime in 2024, capable of generating up to almost 600 pound-feet of torque. So Maseratis are supposed to perform, let's see how it does. Alright, from this light, there's a little bit of turbo lag, but I like the sound that's coming out of the back of this four-cylinder and this has over 300 horsepower, this Modena trim. It feels like a good amount of power to get this little SUV out of its own way. You also get these large paddle shifters that are mounted to the steering wheel column, which can also add to that experience if you want to select your own gears. But overall, I think this has as much power as you need to have some fun. All Grecale engines will be linked to an eight-speed automatic transmission and standard all-wheel drive. So going into the corner, this has adaptive suspension. Let's see how that feels. All right. The all wheel drive system is rear wheel drive bias and you can definitely feel that because right there it felt like the back tires wanted to just come out and have some fun. But that all wheel drive system puts power down to the wheels really nicely and it kept me nice and planted. The available limited slip differential and adaptive sport tuned suspension assist in getting the power down to the ground going around corners. Even with the large wheels, the Grecale does a great job providing a composed ride. When going in a straight line, our tester with the 2 liter engine can sprint from 0 to 60 in around 5 seconds. That engine will also get 25 miles per gallon in combined driving. If speed is what you're really after, the Trofeo model can reach 60 miles per hour in as little as 3.6 seconds. As a daily commuter, the Grecale does a good job. It's comfortable, the seats feel good, and the steering is relatively light, but we do have it in this comfort setting. And there's three different modes. You have comfort, GT, which is pretty much the middle ground, and sport mode. And if you wanna have a good time, just throw it in sport mode. It makes it louder. You can have more audible sounds coming out. It definitely stiffens up the suspension and your steering is firmer as well and the throttle response is a lot quicker. And it feels like those gears shift with purpose. This really adds to that experience. From the driving position, there is a nice elevated view of the road so you can see far down in front of you and not a lot of hood to look over, which is great. However, over my right shoulder, there's a nice thick C pillar that's right there that may block your view from smaller cars. They do offer blind spot monitor, the bad part is, it's not standard. The good news is at least you'll have standard adaptive cruise control, forward collision mitigation, and front and rear parking sensors so you don't bump into any rogue poles that just appear out of nowhere. I think the Grecale does a great job combining pleasant road manners with performance and fancy appointments with soft materials and good looking materials. So if you're looking for a performance luxury SUV, this checks all the right boxes. Starting price for a base Grecale GT model starts at just over 65 grand and will include 19 inch wheels, LED headlights, power liftgate, leather seating and trim, driver's memory seat settings, navigation, dual zone climate control, and a 14 speaker audio system. 
step up to the Modena model for a bump in horsepower and larger 20-inch wheels, sport-tuned suspension, heated front seats, wood trim, panoramic sunroof, and added safety features like adaptive cruise control with stop and go, blind spot monitor, and lane keep assist. To get the most out of the Grecale, the Trofeo model with the twin turbo V6 includes 21 inch wheels, adaptive air suspension, carbon fiber trim, and tri-zone climate control. In typical luxury fashion, there's also plenty of various packages and standalone features that can be added for some extra dough. So I bet you're saying to yourself, man, this Maserati Gercale looks great. I want to grab one. Well, Kelly Blue Book can help because we can get you a fair purchase price on this Maserati or maybe even something British or German. Go on KBB.com, click the link above for more details. This performance compact SUV is looking to compete with the aforementioned Porsche Macan and BMW X3, Jaguar E-Pace, Mercedes-Benz GLC, and fellow Italian Alfa Romeo Stelvio. With hard-hitting competitors in this segment, the new Gricale brings fun driving dynamics with that Italian charm. So, Maserati did a great job with their Gricale. This is a good-looking compact SUV. It has Maserati styling, it has performance chops, and it has practicality and some good tech. I mean, if you don't want to go to the other Europeans, maybe you should Go Italian. 